going to this United States hospital today for a ceremony in their honor are Auckland women known to the patients as the Grey Ladies. Dressed in the grey uniform of voluntary Red Cross workers, these women have come every week for the last 18 months to work for the patient. To show their appreciation of the help of the Auckland women, the hospital staff has assembled to see Miss Claire Lustman, Assistant Field Director of the American Red Cross, present service badges to the 36 grey ladies. After the ceremony, these women get right on with their self-appointed job of looking after the cot cases. They see to it that they get their favourite cigarettes and candy, and their clothes mended as well. In fact, they do everything they can, from handing out books to shopping messages, so that these American lads will not feel strangers in a strange land. And when they write home, these boys can say, Dear Mom, don't worry about me. The New Zealand grey ladies are just swell the way they're looking after us guys. This day at Wellington Cenotaph, citizens of the capital with representatives of the armed forces and allied nations gather to pay tribute to the American dead of World War II. Today is American Memorial Day, our allies' national day of homage to her war heroes. For the first time, it is celebrated in New Zealand. On behalf of our government, the acting prime minister, Mr. Sullivan, carries the first wreath to the Cenotaph. The day is linked in sentiment with our own Anzac Day. For the people of America, it is a day dedicated to solemn observance throughout the years to come. We share the day, for we are allies in a common cause, and some of America's dead are buried in New Zealand. Our fighting forces pay their tribute. On every front, New Zealanders and Americans have fought and died together. Men from Auckland, Southland and Taranaki, with men from Utah, Texas and Idaho. While the ceremony in Wellington is in progress, the stars and stripes fly above Waikamati Cemetery where homage is also being paid today to Americans who lie here, simple crosses heading their graves. His Excellency the Governor General takes part in the brief but impressive ceremony. This hallowed ground is America's. Back in Wellington, representatives of the United Nations pay their tribute, each in turn laying a wreath. Later, at Karori Cemetery, the wreaths from the cenotaph were placed on the graves of Americans, men who died from illness and from wounds after service in the Pacific, men who died far from home. At the Cenotaph, the ceremony draws to a close as representatives of the U.S. forces pay homage to their fallen comrades. Today, the thoughts of these men are of those who fought with them and now lie buried in such cemeteries as this on Guadalcanal, where white crosses stand before a native church. This is the price some men have paid. They fought for us. At the end of the ceremony in Wellington, the huge crowd hears an address from the National Commander of the American Legion, Mr. Warren H. Atherton. We stand before this cenotaph in the spiritual presence of the hallowed dead. We come here to pay tribute to those comrades of all wars who died that liberty might live. In particular, today, we pay tribute to those who have died far from home, who are here in your midst. Our two nations have marched far forward on the path of progress in the protection of their citizens by the enactment of social legislation. Mr. Atherton referred to those buried in New Zealand whose voices still speak. Voices, I am sure, would say to us, we the dead have won the war. You, the living, must win the peace.
this day unites two nations who work and fight together to win and hold a peace. That is our determination and our resolve. By invasion day, flax straw had been fed into the scotching machines of this Blenheim linen flax factory for more than three years. The partly scotched material is passed into a second machine and emerges as top grade linen fibre. There are 16 factories in the South Island turning out raw material for Britain from New Zealand grown linen flax. Outside, more flax straw comes steaming from the retting tanks where bacterial action has prepared it for scotching. It goes to be dried by sun and wind on the factory paddock. All these activities are stages in the preparation of a vital raw material of war. Linen makes the finest sewing threads for military boots and equipment, and linen makes fire hoses to fight the flames of war. Above all today, linen makes best the lines and harnesses of parachutes. These British paratroops making practice drops from a blimp may well be suspended from their silk chutes by cords of New Zealand linen. These stacks of flax straw at the Blenheim factory were made after last summer's pulling of the crop. Linen seems to do what it likes in the Marlborough climate. Some volunteer flax is coming into flower here right out of season. All through the year, straw from the stacks goes through the de -seeder. While the straw goes to the factory, the seed goes to make linseed oil and cattle cake, or back to the farmers to be sown. This farmer is preparing to carry out the autumn sowing of linen flax. This is a Marlborough specialty and a proved success. It is not done anywhere else in New Zealand or anywhere else in the world. The crop grows through the Marlborough winter, it flowers and is pulled in spring. Having two harvestings each year makes things easier for the factory. Many thousands of acres of British wheat lands are under linen flax for war purposes. And so the growing of the crop in the Dominions is saving British land for the growing of food. In three years, New Zealand farms and factories have sent a million pounds worth of best linen fibre to Britain. Some of the autumn sown crops are already coming through. These seedlings will soon be grown and ripe for pulling, ready for processing for the needs of war. Over British soil, the paratroops go through their paces, preparing for deadly and dangerous work. Their harnesses and parachute lines are made from linen, which all the Dominions have helped to provide. of the paratroops descending behind the invasion coasts, it is good to know that a vital part of their equipment has been contributed by the special effort of New Zealand farmers and factory workers. 